again and welcome to Vance Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick. It's a little brisk out there. It is a little, a little brisk. Chilly, a little chilly. I might have a little tootsy uh, frostbite. <laughs> <laughs> might, have, might have gotten the t- toes a little chilly on your walk this yeah. morning. Yeah. Okay, so I have upgraded to all wool socks. Yep. So that is a big difference. Because it actually all does. All wool or just have more wool? I think these might have been like actual, I don't know, right. maybe yes, predominantly yeah. wool. But I, uh, yeah. maybe they were 100% wool. Maybe. I think I... Um, I specifically looked, mm. and so I have four pairs. They're those Swiss types with the little pattern on the top, yeah. and they're all yeah. a shade of gray. And I'm like, why? Because I'm like, is this yeah. the pair? Yeah. I have a couple <laughs> pairs. I have socks. I've got a pair. I can't remember what color they are that are the same thing. And I'm like, these don't match. Right. They must be these two. And so yeah. at one stage, I was like, why do I just just get black socks and white socks, right? And then everything. That's not fun. It really isn't. Yeah. Um. So, yes. I want to take just a quick minute, a couple things. This is going to branch into all sorts of things, I'm sure. Um, I did want to take a quick minute and thank anybody who came out to the um, Festival of Trees that was hosted uh, to benefit Freedom Movement New Hampshire. Um, especially a shout out to Framers Market yes. for graciously letting us use their uh, front area for like three days. And um, Jack and Tyler are just such good people and they do great work. Um, if you've never been to Framers Market, they not only do framing, obviously that's the name, um, and they do an amazing job of that, but they also sell a lot of um, art, actual, actual art. Yeah. So and it's like a mini art gallery and a framing shop. And um, local artists who yeah. stop in. I was there actually, they framed my birthday present yeah, from the, a couple the, of years the ago. Guy. Yeah, the astronaut yeah. guy. And it's, I mean, it's an amazing job. Yeah. Um, and while I was there, like some guy came in, I think he was an immigrant and he had these yeah. like really oh, vibrant, this. um, you know, paintings yeah. and, and they were like, yeah, we can get you in the schedule and stuff. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, like, um, I, it was funny because Jack was showing uh, Brittany's daughter how he's working on a shadow box. They, he does a lot of shadow boxes um, for people with like military flags or their medals and things, oh, yeah. which is really a neat thing. You know, right. if your if your father was in the military, you know, you want to have a memory. Um, so, anyways, if you have never been to Framers Market, do check them out. Um, they are at thirteen oh one Elm Street. And uh, uh, much appreciated there. And um, I want to reach out also to Gene and Steve Matthew, who yeah. donated some gift cards. Um, they weren't the only people who donated by far, but these are the people that I dealt with myself. Um, and then I realized that the places, the re- I went out and bought a lot of gift cards. Because they're just what we, this was a last minute. Are all the trees gone? Where they are. are we with this? They were raffled. Out. They was, it was, it's so sh- I feel like I missed the whole thing. I was like, oh, I'm so busy. No, I have it's hard. things. And then I was like, this- oh, when I see, I actually asked Louie on the way here. I was like, I think I need to write a check for Tammy. <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. So oh. this is the way, this was their building. Like this, this just was a last minute fundraising um, idea that they had. So they're looking to build on it for next year. And they, of course, is... Uh, they are Freedom, Freedom Movement New Hampshire, who has a 24-bed facility on uh, Manchester Street for men um, in recovery. So there were a lot... I, I, I The things I wanted to do, if I had months to do, I would have uh, had time to solicit more donations. But there, there's only so much time in a day, and it, there's a lot of back and forth. So I ended up buying most of the gift cards that I wanted. But right. I did get some from places... Um, and then I realized when I made the list, I'm like, and these really are some of my favorite, like that I'm partial, but I'm soliciting a donation. I'm going to go to the place I want. Right. You know, like I don't go to a restaurant. I don't like, so, um, the one that came through probably the most, um, was Elm House of Pizza. I had sent oh, Tim yeah. Baines a quick, a quick message and he said, of course. And he gave us $50 in gift cards oh, for wow. Elm House of Pizza. I'm a big fan of Elm House of Pizza. I've never had bad food from there. And if you do not eat gluten, they have a cauliflower crust pizza and it's always really, really good. They have great cocktails. They have all sorts of good food. Um, they're in the old Theo's location down on lower Elm Street. Um, Unity Cafe. Also one of my favorite I places. I had lunch there yesterday. Um, I love their spinach salad. Yep. Like, I forget how much I love their spinach salad until I have it again. And then I'm like, I don't know why I don't just get this I, every I time. Had a, I had a not spinach salad because, and I know I've said this on the show before, humans cannot process raw spinach. We literally cannot process the really? enzyme. And so, so you happens? should switch from spinach to arugula. Mm, um, I like a yeah, arugula it's as too much. peppery. It's just got a different bite. I yeah, mean, I like it. It does have a different bite. Interesting. I'm going to have to pay attention to spinach because now you got me curious. Interesting. So, uh, yeah, I had the I had the arugula 
uh, walnut. Waldorf? Uh, no. no. Uh, pear. Yes. Pear yes, salad yes, yes, yes. there yesterday. Yeah. It was delicious. And then I just threw some shrimp on top. Um, so they donated some, get, some, you know, a few little gift cards. Um, my favorite place to grab coffee if I'm going to sit around and gossip for a while is uh, Simply Delicious Baking out in Bedford on oh, okay. 101. I haven't been there. Um, really good people. Um, good coffee. She's an amazing baker. Oh, like, see, I avoid those delicious well, I know. bakery they do, places. I know, but they do also do, I mean, I know they still wouldn't work probably for you, but they do have gluten-free. She always has like a gluten-free cookie or a right. grain-free there. Yeah. You know, she does do a little bit of a, you know, if you're going right, to have a of course. And I feel like when I eat her stuff, it's not sicky sweet. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. you have a scone and right. you're like, well, that was really mm. yummy. But yeah. you aren't like, oh, oh dear Lord, right. I shouldn't have eaten that. Um, <laughs> And then but you shouldn't have right. And then um, Martha up at Rap City, which is another one. You, you, you can't eat anything. You're oh, like Mary. No, you can eat out, eat out, take out food. It's trickier. I mean, it's it always is, bread. But honestly, I do think that you know it, that that's not on accident. No, it is something that people can be mindful about. The question becomes why, or uh, you know, if you don't take care or create your own nourishment. Yeah. Why are the choices I know it is so poor some, out there? Because sometimes it's really bad. I mean, we hardly not even ever just the eat bread. out. But you know, we stopped in and uh, at a restaurant, um, and I looked at the menu, and I was, and I was like, I don't really like, want oh, any of that. Well, I was more like, there's nothing I can eat here right. except for like a, a salad Caesar salad, right. which is literally let uh, the lettuce. American version is lettuce with, with ranch <laughs> on it or Caesar on it with bread on it. Right. You know, there's no anchovies. No, no. There's no like real yolk um, in the dressing. And my my favorite like my favorite like little go to I say my favorite and then I never rarely get something but Dan always does is the dancing lion. So now they're talking about dancing lion is yes. an amazing little place. So Richard over there um we go in a lot of times when I take the show on Wednesday I'll meet up with Dan for lunch and we'll go to like Chef's Keen and then it's right next door. So Dan will stop and get some drinking chocolate. And I don't mm. want to call it hot chocolate cuz even though it's warm it's it, drinking chocolate. Yeah, it's, it's, it is it's chocolate. It's actually cocoa. Right. Like it's, 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 it's real. Yeah. And I was talking to Richard because I was like, I don't understand. Like, how do you make, how do you stay in business? Because he's been there for so long. And I had to. charge a lot well, for yeah, but, really delicious but even chocolate. That, I was like, but still. <laughs> and he talked about how, like, he's a, like a world-renowned chocolatier. chocolatier yeah. So he teaches yep. chocolate. Tear stuff. Um, He's Ganache. like a real life. He was Willy talking Wonka. about I love that guy. and right. how uh, you know. And then we were talking about what we think of as ganache, which is completely different than what he thinks of as ganache. Yeah. So he does do that a lot, and he has people who come from all over the world to go to that little chocolate shop. Yeah. So it was. I was like, you I, know, I, we I have thought... this gem of a place right in downtown Manchester. And what amazes me, yes, the chocolates are really expensive. Well, there are. But they're also delicious, and they're one of a kind. Yeah. He was telling us that, too. When they make a recipe, they never use it again. Yeah. Um, but that that drinking chocolate that is absolutely amazing is like 4 bucks, four fifty or something. And I'm like... That's how much hot I mean, chocolate at Dunkin' Donuts costs. As, as a treat, yeah, as a treat. So why not get the real thing? Right, absolutely. And actually, I've had some, uh, I haven't, maybe I fell off their mailing list. This is good because Tammy's reminding me, you know, to go find right. the places you love yes. and support them. Right, you know? make sure you stop in and spend money with those people sometimes so that they're there the next time you want. Well, and, and, and maybe this is unique to me, but, you know, one of the things I struggle with is because my network is so big. Uh, sometimes I'm like, oh my God, how do I how do I onboard more people, right? right? And and then it feels very overwhelming. And then Kate Baker actually to told me, just deal with the person in front of you. Yeah. So this year I've been like sort of yeah. trying that, but then trying to add this component of lift your friends, yeah. right? And on top of lift your friends, and it's like, well, what are the things you actually love right yeah. like i do love good chocolate right i avoid it i should probably just do the darker ones and whatever but it's like why not when you're gonna have something you truly love make it special right make it an experience so that you're so doing that it's it not with just in moderation right. Right? right so you're not just like chocolate chocolate well, chocolate. it's just like a cocktail you're i know you don't you don't drink a cocktail but if you're gonna go out right like i i i can't tell you i rarely like literally rarely have a margarita like, I just don't. 
But whenever we go but to... But they're sh- so delicious. No, well, I've been, the last couple times we've been to Shorty's, they have a cranberry margarita. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, oh. And I asked them, can you make it, you know, can you not put triple sec in it? Can you just put a little extra lime, you know, like yep. tweak it a little bit? But they said, give it to you and it's got the pretty little cranberries <laughs> and a spring of rosemary. And I'm like, but if I'm going to drink a m- margarita, it's not going to be some green lime some, mix right. margarita. It's going to be a margarita that, right. like, well, that was really good. Because what, and, and why is that important? It is actually a way for people to, to create experiences, mm-hmm. to enhance your life, but also create pathways to go, well, what is important to me? Right. What do I like? How am I spending my time? Right. What am I consuming? What am I feeding myself with? Yep. How do I nourish my body? Like all those things that over the long term then help people to to be more mindful, yep. which is just, you know, the hippie word for aware, which yep. is yep. just the verb for a consciousness, <laughs> right? So the more people are in their own milieu and yeah. sculpting yep. the life that they want, right? The better off we everybody should Everyone be. Everyone is. Um, so, so those Dancing are, Lion. Those go Dancing Lion at, right next to Shaskine, which is also a great place to grab yeah. lunch if you want. If you like a if you like a turkey club, their turkey club is so large that Dan and I split it. So I um, and, you know, it's and it's more than enough. I do, I do um what is your particular preference on fries french fries do you know what kind of fries they have there because they, they used have to sweet have... potato fries. they have shoestring sweet potatoes they have shoestring regular potatoes and then they have i think chunkier they're like a little cup so they used to have many moons ago uh probably when i was still drinking because i feel like the fries and the <laughs> beer went together maybe yeah. but they had um they had real fries that I would say, like, where you get it with vinegar. Yeah, and, it, it, and it's still, their fries are still good, though. Okay, because you know, I like, think they stopped making those, and then I was like, well, I'm not going to go I, there anymore. I like a, I don't like a big, beefy, like, steak fry. I don't want a slice of potato. <laughs> I want a fry. <laughs> See, but, I, want a, I want a conduit for the top vinegar. Yeah, see, that's the thing. <laughs> um, Half of it is right. There, just like yeah. Um, yeah. Oh so, God, now I'm starving. I'm, I'm sorry. I ate before I came. Um, <laughs> so while we were doing the tree festival um, on Saturday, was the the parade. holiday parade, yeah. which you know is the Christmas parade, but we call it the holiday How parade. Was that? Well, so I was busy inside. So in right. fairness, I really wasn't paying that close of attention. Um, I did see different things go by. Dan said he really liked the the jazzer size thing, and there was a you know like I, there was I, I don't want to make it sound like there was nothing in it, right? But the very first, I think the very start of the parade, I'll tell you, nothing says holiday cheer like a bear cat. There was a you know what's even better than bear cat. Wait, what's even better than one bear cat? Is two bear cats. Now she's also not referring to the nice fighting bear No, I'm referring to the tactical military style um, SWAT vehicles. B- ballistic that- engineered. Uh, oh shit! I don't even know. It's awful. But those were the start of the parade. I took a picture of it and posted it on Facebook because I was like, nothing says holiday cheer like a bear cat. And I thought. Okay, so that was bad. So I have seen them do it in other city things, Uh, too. And sometimes it's kind of weird. I mean, it's almost like this will sound ungracious, and it is, but it's also true. So sorry. But, you know, I've seen them where they do them and then they have like the little boys and they kind of let them play with it like and, they're and making them all like comfortable and training them well, for like so this militarized my take future. my takeaway on the parade was and i like i said there were floats and there were lights and there were you know things i don't know why there were four snow plows in a row <laughs> i was like I, I don't understand like literally four snow plows at one point in the parade and okay. i was like it wasn't like they were blowing fake snow or no um, there were, there was a M- Manchester transit bus. There were obviously fire trucks. There's always fire trucks and police vehicles and all this stuff. But it was just like, is this, oh, th- it just felt like a parade of city vehicles. So that said, and it was kind of sad because be that, you know, they, so <laughs> what, one of the real challenges in life with institutions, I think is it's hard to sustain 
long, um, pro- any project, uh, it whittles. Sustainability in general is really hard, right. right? And so, I mean, certainly like with political parties, they've basically figured out, oh, we have to just constantly have this polarization yeah. and keep people fighting yeah. about a very narrow yeah. part of the problem, right? Um, and so maybe, you know, Christmas parades well, have had their no, day. No, but that's or the maybe thing. I don't need think a it renaissance, is. So but it a big sound... change is the Christmas parade used to be put on by In Town Manchester. Okay. Which is Sarah Beaudry was ran In Town Manchester, and they did a really, really good job. And I think it takes work yeah. to pull off a really good parade. And now it's done by the city. Mm. And quite honestly... It what it was shorter. It was like under well, an hour. I mean, you I had like thought it was. I might have. It's Bearcats and plow trucks. Well, I mean, and you're filling it in with all the and... all the government vehicles. The Bearcat was a whole nother layer of weird for a uh-huh. Christmas parade, in my opinion. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It just no. So, anyways, so, that so was that was my Christmas parade. Here's, here's a recommendation I have. Maybe we could start a petition and we could do this in Manchester, and it would be playful and uh, kind of tongue in cheek and. Uh, It'll make me happy. Is we should start a petition that we need to paint our bear cats pink. At least they'd be softer. So and and I mean they're not like, used, why? Why do, why are they but black? Why are they black and why you know to intimidate? So if they're really there to be a de-escalation tool, then which let's make them a softer, prettier color. A straight face. Maybe a lilac. Ooh, lilac's my favorite color. You know, some some gr- <laughs> some um a mural down the side of it, right? Or Maybe a yeah. bear cat painted on the um, side, a cute little fuzzy one. Uh, okay. So clearly, we have prepared very well for this show today. Yeah. So I'm just sitting here and so, hoping Tammy has something. To I talk brought two about. different stories. Um, the shorter one. Let's do. Well, maybe not the shorter. So I did read in the paper this morning, and I really don't. I don't feel like I'm knowledgeable, even though I know, obviously, I have friends that are involved in the rehab um, space, pro- yeah. you know, things. Um, Gatehouse, which is Gatehouse Treatment, the firm Manchester Alderman contracted with earlier this year to provide detox services to homeless individuals, informed the city this week it is terminating the agreement due to lack of, they say, due to lack of staffing. Now, I don't know if that's the case because I have no friends who work in these the, these circles and I'm not 100% confident that that is what it was all about. But whatever it is, that was um, that was that was the, the plan. This is how we were getting people off the street and into detox and then on to where they need to be. What are we 91A these guys? Are they getting government money and ask them how many people um, they serve? Well, and- so interesting. This is where my, this is where I start going like, come on. Okay. Under the terms of the plan, this was the plan that was arrived earlier this year. Gatehouse would be paid $300,000 to help 30 homeless individuals. So I'm like, okay, that is a thousand. No, that's $10,000. A person. Right? Well, if I take people? off, if I take off a zero, these two, it's one thousand, one thousand thirty. No, that would be ten thousand dollars a per person, person, which is a decent. That's no, not, not nothing. Not that we're giving to the homeless people to make their lives better. That we're giving to other people. Well, to, to detox get them detox. The I'm just saying, people. somebody the, the detox process. It, there, it it is a process. So. Just keep in mind that that's what the goal was. $10,000, so there was money for 30 individuals was the goal, okay? Um, For individuals suffering from opioid abuse, um, payment would come after and if the treatment program was deemed successful, which that's kind of hard because you're asking Gatehouse to front all the work. So that seems a little, right? I'm saying that's a little strange. Okay. Um, Phase one of the treatment included a triage solution providing detox for a minimum of three to seven days with short-term private detox option of three to seven days. Phase two involved stabilization, including continuum of care for all individuals screened and placed in triage from phase one. Stabilization may contain psychiatric unit, re- residential level of care, partial hospitalization program, intensive outpatient housing with a time frame of generally four, 30 to 45 days. So a lot in a lot of instances, I think the goal was is that Gatehouse would do the outreach and pull somebody in and get them through the detox program and get them through this 30 days. And then that's probably where they would go into, say, Freedom Movement, New right. Hampshire housing. Okay, just to put it in there. Now, I'm always we're always a big... Um, dependence on metrics you know tell me how many homeless people there actually are don't tell me different numbers every week because then i don't believe you um according to adrian below um 
the city's homeless director, I'm going to call her that because that's really what the job is. They can call it housing stability all they want, but it's a homeless director. To date, the project has served 90 individuals. Okay. Wait. Over how okay. long? Well, according to Adrian Boulogne, Gatehouse provided outreach and care coordination while acting as a direct liaison to Sunrise Treatment in Massachusetts, which that makes sense. That's the detox facility, which the city holds a separate contract with to provide private pay for detox for eligible pro project participants. So I think Gatehouse gets finds them, gets them there, takes them from there. to. So they're the facilitator, it sounds okay. like. To date, the project, which... You know, again, it. Yeah, yeah. what is the project? Has served 90 individuals with substance abuse detox. Okay. Following detox, the vendor reported 19 continue to be in treatment. Okay. So 20 various, out of 90, so we'll say 15%. Right. 29 found their way to a housing solution. Okay. And 42 participant status is unknown. So I call baloney because you can't tell me that you don't know that some of those 42 are back exactly where they started right. and be honest about it and say 36 people have relapsed and are back on the street. Be honest about it. Just don't say there's 42 people. We have no idea. We have no idea because they never want to tell us. I feel that's what as a taxpayer, I feel like they never want to tell us the whole situation. They throw out <laughs> fragments of numbers that sound like, oh my God, we have to do this. But then they're not telling us the results in real numbers. Um, it was kind of like when they were putting out COVID numbers a couple years ago and you were like, wait a minute. So those weren't just random people over the age of 60 that died. Those right. are people over the 60 who were also living in nursing homes who, or, you know, where you were like, wait. Or like this statistic that I heard over the weekend, uh, because I believe there are some legislators up at the state house who are starting a a uh, committee to look into vaccine harm in New Hampshire, mm. specific to New Hampshire. And uh, the committee's sort of like pre-research has discovered that there was one child cited, and I actually remember that think... citation, of dying yes. of COVID in New Hampshire. That child had three or four comorbidities and, um, and did, you know, yes, did pass, but it was one of those where it was like, well, well did that child die from perhaps, the COVID? Right. You know, there, but again, there was a there child, I want to say in New Hampshire, there was a there child that. There are five yes. children who have died within a week of receiving the, the vaccine. vaccine. Not from COVID. So, so I think it's going to be these small stories, right? Because when we hear things if you put and it too it's big, so it's, insurmountable, it's sound, yes. this is a good example itself too, it's, right? Because we're dealing with 100 people and we can kind of right, break it out. Honest. So if we Ta make if the you, 90, 100 this, and we make the 42, right. it has a 50% failure rate. Right. And if that 40, is more than 50%. Because where, how do you not 90, know the right? status of 42% of... 42 out of 90 of the people that you're helping. What do you mean? How do you know? So I mean, they, they went somewhere. Sometimes I'm like, what would happen if each of us just had to adopt a homeless person? I mean. Well, you would keep track but, of him. Well, you would track it better. You'd I be like, know I don't that. know. Bob said he was going to detox and then I never saw him again. You know, but, like. But you know, when when, when we criminalized in, in the States, we criminalized so many uh aspects of of employment and stuff i'm back to the you know remember when people used to like live in your basement and kind of do your gardening and you paid them under the table and put their kids through school right. and all of that part of the social malaise we see is because we've destroyed yeah. all of those other ways that people kind of lift and help yep. each other right Nobody the, worries about shoveling Mrs. Smith's driveway anymore. No, but also because it's been outsourced, unless you're lunatics like <laughs> Tammy and I, everyone's like someone's taking care of the problem. It, somebody else. But the point is that's not actually true because the government by its very nature is incompetent. So this is like <laughs> the worst way to solve these problems. Um, the last little bit I have, which is short, um, Ward 9 representative, Democrat representative um, Alessandra Murray has been in a bunch of hot water because she is the co-founder and employee of Reproductive Freedom Fund of New Hampshire, RFFNH, and she is a state rep, and she was brought on the file. Um, her employer said in an interview, like, in the world that um, they pay her 
to vote on abortion bills. Whoa. Like she has this job where we gave her this position because she can go and vote on legislation pertaining to abortion. So the House Ethics Committee ruled Tuesday, yesterday, that Representative Alexandra Murray must rec- recuse on votes related to abortion issues and the nonprofit paying the Manchester Democrats' salary, an indirect rebuke to her questionable actions as a House member. So, um, and this is a bipartisan ethics committee. There was um, Cindy Rosen. Wald, who's a Democrat senator, is on that committee. She's the only one who didn't vote to say, no, you have to recuse, your, recuse yourself. So now it'll be interesting to see if uh, this organization, Reproductive Freedom Fund of New Hampshire, are you going to continue to fund Representative or, Murray, or, or yeah. was that a pay-to-play thing? Because it sounded like it was a pay-to-play thing. So just things. Um, I just <laughs> thought it was interesting because I, and that is what I think the Ethics Committee should do. I think the Ethics Committee should spend less time worrying about whether or not somebody got a $25 lunch bought from you know the Hotel and Restaurant Association or whatever, and more about actual voting practices of some of the members. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I thought it was interesting. It was just like, oh, I was surprised kind of to hear that. Um, there is a presidential debate tonight. This time there are four Republicans on stage. There is Chris Christie. God only knows why. How is he I still don't in know. the race? Um, Vivek Ramaswamy, that. Ron DeSantis, and Nikki Haley. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, I heard somebody say, I forget who I was listening to, and they said, I think Vivek the more people hear from him, the better he does. Right. Because the more people hear from him, the more they like him. Um, but then it's hard to get people to hear you. But right. with only four on the stage, maybe this there's is probably, his if, you yeah. know, um, Chris Christie, the more people hear from him, I don't think the, the more less, they like him. No. And sadly, I'm not really sure if that's not the case with Ron DeSantis. And I know a lot of my friends are supporting Ron DeSantis, but the, a lot of the pundits are like, nah, it's not really, this is not really so much. See, but I think that's just them playing politics. Like, I don't people know. People understand. I mean, I'm surprised he's not doing better in, I in thought, New Hampshire, to but, be honest. But, you know, it's a tricky, and, tricky and business. I mean, you know, I, I want to like Nikki because I want to be like, mm. yo, go girls, but she's yeah, pro-war. She she's she's too a neocon. Pro-war. I mean, don't get me wrong. I will vote for Nikki Haley if she's the nominee over Joe Biden. Well, I mean. But I would vote for these pair of glasses over (laughs) Joe Biden, this anything over Joe Biden. So, I mean, I don't want to make it sound like I would never vote for Nikki Haley. However, out of um, all the choices that were put forth in front of Republicans, she's too much of a neocon for uh, me, to be yeah. my first choice no just saying uh, war is bad folks let's spread more peace yeah, let's, go with, uh, let's go with not bombing the world yes let's let's not do that peace is good anyways on that note that we're out of time um if you have a favorite place that you want us to talk about or you want us to try um email us at manchtalk at gmail.com and otherwise we will be back next week for another charming episode of our show <laughs> bye guys bye peace out